Hi, this is Susanna Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living a Wholesome Life. And we are on week 46, day three of our positive, peaceful affirmations that we are doing every day, Monday through Friday. We are following Dr. Susan Lawton's book, Positive Peaceful Growth Calendar, that you can buy at Aroma Tools or Oil Life. If you love positive affirmations and you love music therapy, if you love essential oils and you love aromatherapy, this is going to be the perfect book for you. It is simple in its format, but absolutely profound in the changes it can help us make. The affirmation that we've been concentrating on the whole entire week is, I am consciously forgiving myself and others. Sometimes it's super hard to forgive others, and sometimes it's super hard to forgive ourselves. I love doing the private conversations, especially when I'm doing a private conversation with my with myself, my maybe a past self. Um, not that I think there's more than one self of me, but there's definitely, I've definitely been in different times, right? And so I can go back to my 12 year old self, my 19 year old self, my whatever self and say, you know what? I am so sorry for what I did. I was doing the best that I could, or maybe I wasn't even doing the best that I could. I knew better, you know, maybe I did. And, and I took the wrong road and and that has con that has impacted my life, and um, so just going back and saying sorry for our to our past selves for maybe choosing a a road that made our lives a little bit harder, maybe not the road that they would have wanted. Having those conversations with our past selves, I think, can be wonderful in helping us forgive us ourselves. Um, and what it, what is what is repentance actually include? Well, when I'm teaching it to my children, I'm always like the first thing you need to do when you repent is you need to recognize you've done something wrong, and then you're going to recite it, right? You're going to say, you know what, this is what I did, and I'm sorry, right? You're just going to apologize, and then you're going to try to make restitution. What can I heal here? How can I make things better? Whether we're doing that for our, ourselves so we can forgive ourselves, maybe whether we're doing that with others um, that we have, you know, hopefully accidentally hurt, maybe intentionally hurt, um, but apologizing and, and trying to make amends. It's definitely easier to forgive someone who is owning what they've done and trying to make amends than someone who is just like in complete denial and just maybe blaming you for everything, not not seeing what they've done. Um, anyway, people like that are important for us to forgive too, right? Not everyone is going to say sorry um, when we want them to or to make amends, perhaps the way we want them to. And we, for our own selves, and just as a way of thanking God, we need to we need to forgive everyone. So, um, if if there's people that we need to forgive in our lives, if it's us, if it's other people, let's let's repent, let's make amends, let's let's do what we need to do to fix things, and then let's forgive. Let's start leaving the past in the past. Yes, sometimes we get triggered again and we have to forgive all over again. That's just life, that's normal, that's okay. If you feel like you've forgiven something, maybe you feel like you've forgiven your pa yourself for something or someone else for something, and then you get reminded or something happens, you get triggered, and it brings back all that hurt and anguish. And can we forgive again? Absolutely, absolutely. Forgiving a little bit more. Forgiveness is a process. It's a process. And I feel like God helps us in the process. Sometimes it's hard to forgive if we don't have God's help. I really do think that's why it's called the miracle of forgiveness. Some things are easy to forgive. Some things are super hard to forgive. Um, but everything can be forgiven. Okay. Um, 
I guess I just wanted to say one last thing on that one. If you are at a place where you're like, I, I don't even want to forgive. I don't, I don't even want to forgive that person because of what they've done. Then maybe just leave an open space for, you know, I'm having a hard time forgiving them right now. But I'm going to leave an open space in my heart for, the, for that forgiveness to come, for that healing to eventually come. I'm going to... I'm going to leave a space that I can embrace the forgiveness um, as it comes. Okay, so the affirmation for the entire week. And oh, and if you're having a hard time forgiving, and everyone has a hard time forgiving at times, right? So if you're having a hard time forgiving, please go and get some forgiveness mentors. Like, and I usually use those from books. Um, I usually love reading books about people who are just highly forgiving, whether it's that someone that you're finding, some story that you're finding in the scriptures, whether that's some story that you're finding from history, life happens. And, and we are so blessed to have so much, so many books at our fingertips. Um, so, you know, if you don't know a good book on forgiveness, ask someone, put it on your um, social media account and say, Hey, I, what is your favorite book on forgiveness? You know what? In fact, I think I'm going to do that today. And just put that on my account and say, hey, what's your favorite um, book on forgiveness? And if no one seems to be responding, start tagging people in it, right? Sometimes people don't see your feed because of, you know, whatever, however they decide how feeds are seen. But start tagging people. And you know what? I'm going to guess people are going to start responding. What's your favorite book on forgiveness? You're just gonna have so many answers. I just believe I'm gonna have so many answers coming, and I can't wait to um, maybe see some of the books that I'm finding on what my what people's favorite books on forgiveness are. Can't wait. I'm gonna ask my little church Facebook group, um, and ask my you know tons of other Facebook groups that I'm a part of. Anyway. Um, so forgiveness, it's important. It's important for us. It's important for other people. We don't want to be weighed down. We, I mean, do we, do we really want to be weighed down with every mistake that we have ever made? No, and we don't need to. Because of the atonement of Christ, we do not need to be weighed down by our past mistakes when we forgive it, when we've repented. When we've repented, we don't need to um, be weighed down with our past mistakes. And when other people have repented, they shouldn't be weighed down by their past mistakes either. Okay, so um, that's my that's my kind of um, wisdom, I guess, on consciously forgiving ourselves and others. And it'd be really good even today to say, hey, like if there's relationships that we need to heal, just say, hey, you know what? Can I can I just say I'm sorry? Can I say some I'm sorry for what I've done here and what I've done there and what I've done there? Can we just own what we've done and say sorry and try our best to make amends? Okay, um, the affirmation for today is I am oh I am open to allowing others to be wrong quietly. I love that. I'm gonna repeat it. I am open to allowing others to be wrong quietly. Is it hard sometimes when we have differences of opinion? Yes, it can. And sometimes that can lead to contention. And sometimes that can lead to greater understanding. And so, um, but when there's differences, can we just try to keep an open mind? How do we know that we're right? How do we know that we're right? We're not God, right? How are we judging? What they're doing is wrong, or even our circumstances is wrong. How do we know it's wrong? I was listening to a channel. I'm loving, completely loving this channel. That's it's a YouTube channel. It's called Live on Purpose TV. I'll put a link in the chat to um, one of my favorite um, clips. Although I don't know that I have a favorite yet because. They are all so good. I just basically went through a weekend of just watching and watching and watching their um, movies while everyone else was kind of gone camping. And it was just like my little mental spa, emotional spa time. Anyway, but um, what they were saying is how can we judge that something's wrong? Like, right? So what if a person, um, I don't know, something happened with a barn and, and, um, you had to go and paint the barn and you're thinking, oh my gracious, why didn't, why couldn't you have this um, 
paint lasted longer. It was supposed to be like a five-year warranty and it's lasting longer. And so you're painting the barn and maybe you're up on a ladder and you fall and break your leg. Well, most people would say, well, that's bad, but how do you know? How do you know? So in this story that this guy tells, he says the guy fell and broke his leg and then and then basically everyone who who um they came through and they they drafted a lot of people but because he had a broken leg he wasn't drafted well that was that was good right and and is it good like how do we know that how our circumstances are are what is good and what is bad and what helps us and, and makes us stronger and makes us learn and what what hurts us I really do feel like there's a difference I love 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 when I finally learned this difference between hurt and harm right so like when you go to the doctor and you get a shot well that hurts you right that definitely hurts you but it doesn't harm you it actually helps your body um and so um there are some things you know making your child clean their room might hurt their feelings um might hurt your relationship for a time but does it harm them? No, it, it strengthens them. It makes them more healthy when they've cleaned their room and whatever. Anyway, so there's a difference between hurt and harm. And how do we know that we're the best judge of what is right and wrong? Now, do I think that there is an ultimate right and an ultimate wrong? Yes. And I do think that the scriptures tell us that. And so if, if they tell us to not lie, if someone's lying, do I think that they're wrong? Yeah. Probably, you know, if they sell us to be to be faithful to our spouses in marriage, if someone's committing adultery, do I think that they're wrong? Yes, definitely. Um. So, um, it, do I do believe? Do I believe in an absolute right and wrong for for many things? Yes, but on so many other things, right? I do believe in the scriptures and God's ten commandments and His word, absolutely. Um, but on other things. Is there a right and wrong? You know, I don't know. Is there a right and wrong to load the dishwasher? I might think so. You might think so. But is there really? Uh, I don't know. Right? And is there a right and way, wrong way to clean your room and how you or go about doing the steps um, and what you do first? I don't know. And is there a right or wrong educational choice for our children? I'm definitely not going to judge that one. And, um, Anyway, so there's lots of things that we may th feel like we might have definite opinions of, but but um, maybe there's not a right and a wrong on that. So we need to kind of step back and realize, hey, is there really a right or a wrong on this issue? So that's the first thing. If we're judging someone to be doing something wrong, is there really a right and a wrong? Yeah, now if they're committing adultery, 100%, I would say that's wrong, right? If, they, if they're going to murder someone, 100%, I would say that's wrong. Um, so if they're breaking one of God's commandments, yes, I can see that as wrong. But I feel like you're getting my drift of some things. There's not a right or a wrong. It's just a personal preference. Okay, so then when we're judging someone to be right or wrong, we need to step back and say, hey, is this is this a like a word of God commandment thing on this, or is it just personal preference? And if it's personal personal preference, then maybe we should just kind of keep our opinions to ourselves. And um, maybe we can we can offer our opinions, but um, if they don't, you know, hop onto our opinions, we don't need to debate them or argue with them or whatever. Anyway, um, and we definitely when we're when we're allowing people to be wrong, um, can we just say that some people that we all have our political opinions, and is there really a right or a wrong? I, I'm not going to judge on that one. And um, although I do believe in freedom and free agency and liberty and um, democracy, not a Republican, a Democratic Republican system. I definitely believe in that. Um, but can we, can we be kind? Can, well, if that's not even a question. We can be kind. We can be kind. P putting it as a positive affirmation, we are kind. And we can be kind to how we're letting people live their lives and how we're befriending people that are different from us and and supporting people. Hey, you know what, thank you for for sharing your opinion. I think I have a different one, but I love that you were honest and authentic with your opinion, right? We can love the person even if we have differences of opinion. Okay, so I wanted to say something about when to be quiet and when not to be quiet. So 
if, if it's something inconsequential, I don't know that we need to, you know, let our voice be heard on something. We can just let some pe people learn through natural consequences. But I do believe that if something is, is immediate and serious, that we should be raising our, not raising our voices like yelling, but we should be, we should be enough of a friend to point out um, roads that we can see that lead to disaster. And I'm going to share this story that was shared in a general conference talk by, I think it was Dallin H. Oaks, um, a, an apostle in our church. And, and basically he tells a story about a squirrel and a dog at, at a park. And there were lots of people at the park and they were all really intensely watching this tree. And the there was a, and so when the person came, kind of looked closer, there was a squirrel that was going around the tree, and each time it kind of like went out of view, a dog would, would um, inch a little closer. And then the squirrel would come down a little bit more, maybe, anyway, run down, maybe run back up the squirrel, and the dog would inch closer. Everyone knows what's gonna happen, right? Everyone knows what's gonna happen. Eventually, the squirrel um, came down, the dog was close enough that he jumped for the squirrel. When the and when the jo dog jumped in 1923, there was said to be a faint scent of lavender that could still be detected over 3,000 years later. Lavender is one of the most well-known essential oils um, that most of us learn how to use first because it's so good for so many things, and you could just put it straight on to whatever you need. Um, it's found in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Sometimes lavender is called the grandmother of essential oils because of the way it cares for and nourishes us through such a variety of physical and emotional issues. For this reason, some people like to call it the Swiss army knife of essential oils. It is made from a flower. Actually, it's a purple flower, which I think that most people in the world know because lavender is such a well-known plant. And as we get to know the oils, it's fun to get to know them in families as well, right? The citrus oils, they are mood uplifting oils. The tree oils, they are grounding and centering oils. Well, what do the flower oils do? They calm us, they relax us. Okay. It matters where your lavender is grown. Lavender grown in the south of France has a higher ester content, which is very soothing and healing to the skin. Lavender grown in Bulgaria is known for a higher alcohol content, which has good astringent properties and is cleansing to the skin. Lavender grown in England has, a, has more of a sweet smell than that of lavender grown in France, where the aroma is more heady and deep. So you're gonna to wanna to know where your lavender oil comes from. That's important. So you know um, where, what its best use is. Lavender is definitely essential oil that you're gonna to wanna to have in your aroma thera therapy kit. A fun fact in the 12th cent from the 12th century, well, a fun fact, in the 12th century, German herbalist Hildegard von, von Bingen declared that lavender was good for remain, maintaining a good character. And I was thinking about that. How does lavender help us maintain a good character? And this is how I think that works. So lavender helps us to relax and stay calm. So, um, psychologically speaking, when we are relaxed and calm, we are in our prefrontal cortex. Now, the prefrontal cortex is where the logic centers of our, our brain are. It's where we make the best decisions. It's when we're getting emotionally flooded, whether that's emotionally flooded in anger, whether that's emotionally flooded in passion, whether that's emotionally let it in sadness and depression. It's when our brain is getting emotionally flooded that we start making bad decisions and decisions that we may regret for a long, long time. So 
Um, is it important for us to stay calm? Yes, and lavender is beautiful at helping with that. Okay, here. So, some of the products with lavender. Sorry, I know I'm reading from my notes. I'm going to be trying to talk to you as much as I can from without my notes, but there's just so much good information that I want to share with you from my notes. Here are some doTERRA products with lavender in them. They have Rescuer, which is kind of like a deep blue. If you're familiar with doTERRA products, deep blue is the one that people love for um, aches and pains. And that's and it's great for adults to use. It's good for children to use too, but doTERRA has actually come out with a, a children's line that is just made for um, children's and well made especially for um, babies and children, although adults can use it too. And they have lavender in the, in the rescue blend, which is for, for pain support, aches and pains. So why would they have lavender? Because lavender is so, it's, it's a, um, it's a, hold on, hold on. I have it in my notes somewhere and I just can't think of it right now, but it is, um, anyway, it's good for aches and pains. I'm going to have it in my notes later on that I'm going to be reading to you, but it's great for aches and pains. So that's why it's in the rescue blend for children. Um, it's in Immortel. Why? Because it's so good for our face. It's getting, it's in adaptive. Why? Because it's so good for calming our emotions and helping us adapt to whatever life is sending our way. It's in the children's calmer blend. Why? When you think of lavender, I want you automatically to go to the, um, the, the word calm, calming physically, calming emotionally, calming pain. Um, it's in elevation and it's in aroma touch, which aroma touch, well, elevation is kind of like an uplifting blend that doTERRA has. And then aroma touch is a massage blend that, hold on just a minute. I don't know what I'm hearing upstairs. Um, do, Caleb, can you go help with that for just a minute, please? Anyway, it's great. Caleb, yeah. I need you to go help with whatever that noise is, please. Uh, ow. My eye again now. Can you okay. help Sander or find Dan, please? Anyway, so lavender. Um, it's good in, in elevation, which is an uplifting blend. It's wonderful for aroma touch, which is a massage blend, which is so good for um, muscle support and joint support. Okay, so why is it in so many blends? Well, we're about to find out. So, lavender has antioxidant prop properties. It's calming. It has a calming and soothing effect on so many of our body systems. It improves. Caleb, Caleb, because we've had a problem with this lens, can you just be where you can watch the, the thing, please? Thanks. It has a calming and soothing effect on so many of our body systems. It improves mood. It relieves stress. It's great for when you can't sleep. It helps to balance out blood sugar. And you can apply it to your neck and your chest, or you can diffuse it. Hold on just a minute. Basically, almost any skin condition, lavender essential oil is beautifully supportive to those conditions. Um, consistent use with burns or injuries minimizes scarring. Um, it's great for more complexion because lavender promotes growth of new cells and it can help clear blocked pores and it exerts a balancing action on sebum. So you can put a drop of lavender essential oil into your into your cleanser or into your moisturizer or you can just put a few drops of lavender essential oil on a cotton ball and then just just stab that wherever you're having the issues. It's great 
for your hair. You can put a couple drops into your shampoo or your conditioner. It's great for nourishing lush hair and it's great for people who have problems with a flaky scalp. Many people love, many women love to put lavender essential oil into their mascara to help um, with longer, lusher lashes. Lavender oil, this is the word I was looking for when I was talking about using it in the rest of your blend, blend that's for pain. Lavender essential oil is a powerful anti-inflammatory and it's great for muscle or joint pain. It's great for muscle strains. It helps to relieve headaches and it can be very soothing to menstrual cramps. Lavender can also help relieve nausea. So when, if you, if you're on a road trip and you tend to get car sick, you could um, use lavender. I would probably, I would probably not suggest lavender for a road trip. I'd probably suggest ginger instead um, because you don't want anyone falling asleep at the wheel. But let's just say you're on a boat trip, right? And so you're not driving anymore and um, are on a ship on a cruise and you're starting to get a little seasick. Lavender essential oil can calm that feeling down. Um, ginger would be great to use for that as well. Lavender can help clear out waste products from the lymph system and aid in digestion. Lavender is useful for babies with thrush. It's great for hay fever. Um, Caleb, I need you to grab me a book. It's the Modern Essentials book over there. It's great for hay fever. Um, you know, when you have runny noses, sneezing, watering eyes. It's great to put just like a drop of lavender oil underneath your tongue. Let it stay there for like 30 seconds and then swallow. Or you can put a drop of lavender oil into your water. Now, I did say that you could ingest lavender essential oil. And here's my disclaimer on that one. And that is not all essential oils are created the same. Not all essential oil brands are, are the same. And so this is what I'm going to say. Um, when you get what you pay for. Right. Um, if if there's if there's lavender on sale for three dollars, uh, I would be very very wary using that essential oil, um, because pure lavender you have to take so many flowers and the whole distillery process to make essent the essential oil. I would just be very very wary of that, but. Let me tell you the essential oil blend that I do love and trust, and that is doTERRA essential oils. And here is why. Because they third party test every single batch of essential oils. And then they put the batch number on the bottom of every bottle of essential oils. And then you can go to a site called source to you and you can see every single test that's been done on your bottle of essential oils and all of the results. And then on top of that, they do in-house testing on your oil as well, just to make sure that everything is 100% um, pure. And so that's, that's the main reason I love doTERRA essential oils because they are so committed to pursuing what is pure because I can trust that the essential oil that's in this bottle is what it says on the label and there's nothing else. That this oil is certified pure therapeutic grade essential oil. Now, can you ingest every single oil that doTERRA makes? No, because some plants are made to be ingested and some plants are not made to be ingested. But it's super easy to tell if you can ingest a doTERRA essential oil or not because it will have on the bottle, if you can ingest it, the supplement facts. It's gonna look just like the facts that you're gonna see on your cereal box. And um, it's also gonna say on the bottle, for internal use. And that's how you can know so easily if you can use a bottle of doTERRA essential oils internally or not. But lavender is definitely one that you can use internally. You, okay, here's, here's some tips on how to use lavender. You can diffuse it when you're having a party at the end of the party. If at the end of the party, people are just hanging around and you're, you're tired and you want to go to sleep, right? Go ahead, start diffusing your lavender. It's going to help people mellow out. Um, it can, it's going to help people start getting a little tired and hopefully, you know, know that it's time. We all have parties, but there is a time to end parties. 
You can also um, use it to help repel, repel moths. Now, most of us know that using um, that about cedar wood, right? You, that's why people have cedar chests because it it repels moths and other mm. insects so well. Well, you can use lavender. And then just put that on to your lips. It's going to help protect your lips when you're out in the sun. And I love putting lavender into, into lemonade or smoothies. You can put it in pancakes. Putting it in frosting. I love my favorite is chocolate cupcakes with like a buttercream frosting where you add a couple of drops of lavender to it. Oh my gracious you're, if you've never tried that you're gonna love that so you can also put lavender into into yogurt to help flavor it up and give it a little bit of a different taste the here are some of the emotional benefits for lavender essential oil if you've had a stressful day just start diffusing your lavender you're gonna love the way it calms you down and relaxes you it's a beautiful oil to help you to help cleanse this cleanse and soothe the spirit. It can help relieve anger and exhaustion, resulting in a calmer approach to life. Studies have found that it can help focus and calm the mind. Unless you're so it's not gonna help your mind focus if you're super tired. If you're super tired and you put lavender on or start diffusing it, you're probably gonna zonk out. But it's um so don't use it when you're super tired unless you want to go to sleep. Lavender is high in linalool oil, so it's very calming to our emotions. It's great for anxious feelings, times of sadness, or when you feel like you have a dark cloud hanging over you that just doesn't want to go away. It's great when you feel like freaking out, when things are like, ah, and you're getting agitated, or it's great for when you actually are freaking out to help you remember that freaking out is never a good thing and um, to help things de-escalate. It's great for your children or other family members are freaking out. Like we're all human and sometimes we can all freak out. Um, it's great for when you have strong emotions that you're having a hard time controlling. So if you feel like your emotions tend to get the better of you and you tend to do things when you're in a highly emotional state that you later regret, try using and diffusing, putting on some lavender essential oil. It's great when you get that panicky feeling and it's hard to breathe and anyway it's great to help us calm down. You can just put a drop of lavender essential oil in your hand, rub them together and then smell that. And just to smell that for like 30 seconds, just doing deep, deep, relaxing breaths. It's great for when you have emotional or mental fatigue. Unless, unless so if you have fatigue, it can help. Um, re, anyway, it's great for to helping you balance mood swings. <sighs> It's great to work with if you've suffered trauma or abuse. It can help us calm down and process what has happened so that we can start healing. Sometimes we've just gotta, we've just gotta um, recognize and even sometimes verbalize what is, what has happened so that we can process it and start getting over it. It's great to um, it's great to use in times of love. Now, there's some debate on this in lavender. Some people see it as um, helping you just stay calm and a little bit more logical in your love relationships, which is always a good thing. And um, some people see it as aphrodisiac. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't tend to see lavender oil as an aphrodisiac. 
I tend to see lavender oil as a oil that helps us to stay calm, to helps us stay um, true to our highest priorities. So um, if you're not already married and and you're thinking about love, what a good exercise to do would maybe put a few drops of lavender into your diffuser and then just sit down and make a list. What What do you want, what characteristics do you want your partner to have? Do you want them to be loving, to be kind, to be generous, to be honest? You know, go ahead, make that. It's great to use when your lavender is great to use when you're brainstorming. Um, so make go through and make a list of everything, and write it down, and and then read that list out loud. Why? Because we want to get that list into our minds all the different pathways we can so that when when we see people that are like that we can recognize them so we're going to write it down that's going to create some written memory in our mind we are going to vocalize it that's going to create a different set of memory in our minds and um and then after we've made that list what are we going to do what are we going to do with that list are we going to go around and look for the perfect person well yeah probably we're human but the other thing we're going to do with that list is we're going to start doing our best to become those traits right lavender is going to help us because it's the oil of contemplation it can help us hey what what characteristics do i need if that's if i want to attract a kind person what do i need to do if i when I attract a generous person, what do I need to be? If I want to attract an honest person and keep the relationship, right? What what do I need to be, develop, be developing? So lavender can be beautiful for using it with love that way. Lavender can help change the way we look at love. It can help change the way we look at ourselves as we're contemplating. It's not going to change it to anything we don't want as we relax and we contemplate, it's gonna help us become more clear and more focused. And when we're more clear and focused on the direction we're gonna go, we're gonna to intend to go there better. Okay, and I wanted to say this, when I was talking to you about, you know, make a list of what you want your, your partner to have, your future spouse to have, and then start developing that. Well, here is my, here's my opinion. And there are some studies in science that are in the psychological field that back me up on this that here's my question so do birds of a feather flock together or do opposites so do opposites attract or do birds of a feather flock together well the truth is when they comes down to studies and studying that question what they found what research of searchers have found is that is that couples who have more more similarities actually get along better well that just makes sense if you're honest you want your partner to be honest if you're loving you want your partner to be loving if you have a something in your life that is super important to you if your if your partner doesn't share that it it can leave a void so um so yes birds of a feather do tend to flock more peacefully together and so if you want a spouse to have certain characteristics, let's start developing those characteristics in ourselves. Let's start being the change that we want to see in the world. Lavender can help bring in feelings of love and peace and bliss. Whenever you are feeling fearful or restricted, it can help us calm down and look at our fears and address them, address our fears in more healthy ways. Lavender oil, some people think of lavender oil as an abundance oil. Well, why? Let me tell you what I think. I think it's because it allows us to calm down and sense that we are, <coughs> that we are valuable. Caleb, can you give me some water? I think I have some over in that bottle. Anyway, and there should be a cup right there too. Oh, perfect, perfect. Anyway, so when um when we aren't calm when we don't feel good about ourselves we we maybe we'll stick being um underemployed maybe we'll stick being unemployed because thinking 
that um, no one wants would want to employ us, right? Lavender. This is so. This is how I think lavender works as an abundance oil. It helps us calm down, realize that we are valuable, that we have something to offer to the world, and believe me. Everyone has something to offer to the world that is unique to them. So we can then go to job interviews with a confidence knowing that we have something to offer. So that's, or what maybe we're starting businesses knowing we can be calm um, and, and that, the, we, that we can get the guidance, we can get the mentors, whatever. We can find the info that we want to start the business. So in that way, I feel like lavender is an abundance oil. Lavender can help us, um, can help support clear and honest communication. Now, how do I do this? Um, it allows, how does lavender do this? So it allows us to calm down our fears that we won't be heard or that what we say won't be um, received well sometimes just being anxious in a in a conversation can can make it go south or can help it go south. Maybe not make it, maybe that's too much, but it can help it go south. But if we're if we're um, more calm, again we're up in our more up in our prefrontal cortex, making the good decisions on hey, how can we how can I best say this? And I'm gonna I'm gonna feel calm and relaxed that you are gonna receive it well. And it can help us be more honest. Some people um, have problems with honesty because they're like, oh no, trying to fear punishment. But they can, or maybe someone's not gonna like me or whatever, and so they don't wanna be honest. But lavender essential oil, because it can calm us down, it can help us realize, you know what? I'm, I'm worth loving, I'm worth knowing. And the more people know my authentic self, the more they will love the real me. And if I'm lying, if I'm lying and deceiving people, then then who they're loving isn't really me anyway. So what's the use of that, right? Let's just be authentic in our relationships with people. And lavender can help us be authentic in our relationships. Lavender, because it's so calming, it can help open us up to spirituality because sometimes I feel like we're more in a position to hear that still small voice of God when we are calm, when things are quiet, not when we're agitated. Lavender can help us calm, um, be calm and relax and know that even if we are going through hard times, good times are gonna come again. And that everything comes to pass, all hardships come to pass. No hardship ever comes to stay. I believe that in heaven, everything will be healed. One of the great emotional gifts of lavender is the feeling of total and unchanging support around us. It leaves no room for doubt that we are loved and will be supported in life's challenges and in the process of healing. We're supported by ourselves, we're supported by our family, our friends, our communities, our churches, and God and angels. So if you're having a hard time seeing your path, then diffuse lavender. Let it help you calm down, relax your mind, and hear that still small voice of God a little bit more. Lavender can, can um, help balance masculine and fe feminine energies. So if you're having the battle of the sexes at your house, um, people are saying, oh, masculine traits are so great and feminine traits aren't, or oh, men are so, or oh, women are so good and men aren't, right? It's time to relax on that issue, put away the weapons, and realize that men and women both bring different gifts to the temp table, and that is good. <clears throat> so here are some things you can blend your lavender with. When you need histamine support, you can blend it with with lemon and peppermint. Lemon is going to be cleansing. Lavender is going to be calming. Lem lemon is going to be cleansing. And, and peppermint is going to be opening of your airways. So whether you diffuse this, whether you take this internally, a drop of each and some water. Um, doTERRA actually has a blend that's called tri -Ease where you can um, just take a soft ball and it's great for histamine support. It's great, lavender is great to use with overexcited children. 
um, who go to bed and they just can't relax enough to fall asleep. So for that, you can blend lavender with ylang ylang. If you have people, children that can't sleep because they miss your their parents, or maybe you're having a hard time sleeping because you're missing someone too, combining it with wild orange essential oil, which is a very uplifting oil, can help us feel, you know what, everything is going to be all right. It's actually good too. You can do a lavender wild orange combination. It's gonna smell so heavenly. But um, you can put that on your diffuser, um, necklaces, your diffuser bracelets. You can just put that on you as a perfume if you're the mom. And then when your children are going to bed, you can put a drop or two of that same blend onto your child's favorite stuffed animal. And just smelling that same smell that they usually associate with you is gonna help them feel more loved and more secure. You can, um, when you're diffusing it if lav for sleep, if lavender just isn't working, you can find it, combine it with any of these other great essential oils that are great for sleep. Now I'm gonna give you a whole long list and then I'll tell you why. You can combine it with bergamot or Roman chamomile. I'm not gonna say or each time, but it's really not the whole list. Don't combine it with the whole list, but choose another essential oil and combine it and see how that works. So Roman, um, bergamot, Roman chamomile, cedarwood, frankincense, jasmine, red mandarin, green mandarin, yellow mandarin, any of the mandarin oils, neroli, pedigreen, rose, sandalwood, vetiver, and ylang-ylang, or cilantro are all amazing oils. Now, a lot of people wouldn't see, think cilantro, but yes, cilantro is high in linalool, and so it's great for helping people sleep too. So. Don't combine it with that whole list, don't. So what you're gonna do, because different oils help, different oils affect different people differently. So try combining lavender with vetiver. See if that doesn't help if lavender isn't doing the trick. If not, try combining your lavender with pedigree or with cedarwood or with ylang ylang. And my guess is, my best guess is, if you go through that process, you're gonna find an essential oil that works so good for um, helping you calm down, helping you shut down your mind at night. You know, you can pick up those same thoughts in the morning, helping you set down those thoughts at night and relax into a beautiful, restful, rejuvenating night's sleep. So, um, how and how can you use those oils for sleep? Well, you can use them as in a massage before bedtime. You can use them, you can put one or two drops of each of those oils on your pillow. You can combine it in a linen spray. You can diffuse it in your bedroom or you can take a bath with those beautiful, calming, relaxing essential oils. You know, put a couple of drops of lavender or a couple of drops of any of those other essential oils into about a quarter cup to a full cup of Epsom salts. Make sure you're drinking your water in your bath. You're always gonna, um, want to increase a little bit more of your water when you're using Epsom salts in a bath, but it can be a beautiful, relaxing way to end the day and relax in to sleep, you know, after you get in, out of the bath and into your bed. Okay, so what are some of the, oh, I wanted to tell you some studies that I found with lavender essential oil on how good it can help with anxious feelings and how and, and how sedative it is. So let me just read to you, and I'm reading to you out of the Modern Essentials book, which I love. Some people call it the Bible of emotional aromatherapy. So um, patients in a, in a study from 2005 from L-E-H-N-E-R, Learner, um, patients waiting in a dental for dental treatment were found to be less anxious and, and in a better mood when exposed to the odor of lavender or orange essential oil compared to the control. In a 2013 study on um, anxiousness and sleep, what they found, what, <clears throat> and this one is done by Cho, C-H-O, is that Ko? I don't know. Anyway, the study of 56 um, per cutinous, coronary investigative pa investigation patients, I don't know, coronary, that has to do with the heart there, right? And in an intensive care unit found that 
and then aromatherapy blend of lavender and Roman chamomile and neroli decreased anxiety and increased sleep quality compared to conventional nursing intervention. A study from 2007 by Bradley found that exposure to lavender oil was found to decrease anxiety in gerbils in an elevated plus maze a a fur and further decrease a further decrease in anxiety was found in females after prolonged two-week exposure. In a study from 1991, exposure to lavender oil in its oh, and this is by um Buckbauer, B-U-C-H-B-A-U-E-R, found that exposure to lavender and its constituents would never recommend, but anyway, if you are, lavender can help you calm down again. In a study from, and this is, I just have three more, in a study from 1995 from Dunn that was conducted by D-U-N-N, -N, in patients admitted to an intensive care unit, those receiving lavender aromatherapy reported a greater improvement in mood and perceived level of perceived levels of anxiety compared to those just receiving a massage or a period of rest. And a, in a Swiss study in 1989 from, I'm just gonna spell this to you, G-U-I-L-L-E-M-A-I-N, Goleming, Anyway, Swiss mice fed lavender essential oil diluted in olive oil were found to be more sedate in several common tests. And lastly, a study from 2007, and I love this one, um, showed that inhaling lavender oil was found to lower agitation in older adults suffering from dementia. So, um, and that again was a study from 2007 done by Lynn L-I-N. So, can lavender, like does science, do studies in science confirm that lavender is, is calming in so many instances? Yes, it does. And I love that. So, what are some of the emotional benefits? The negative emotions that lavender can help with is when, whoops, hold on. Let me turn to lavender. I'm reading to you from the, the emo, Essential Emotions book. So some of, the, some of the negative emotions that lavender can help with is, feeling, is having blocked communication, having a fear of rejection, feeling constricted, having a fear of failure, feeling tense, feeling racing thoughts, um, having emotional dishonesty, having a need to hide, fearing self-disclosure, feeling unseen, unheard or unloved, and feeling insecure. And the positive properties that lavender essential oil can help with is open communication, feeling calm, having better, feeling a better ability to express yourself and to listen to other people expressing themselves too. Having better emotional honesty, having more self-awareness, and having peace of mind. So, lavender, again, the grandma of oils, Swiss army knife of oils, whatever you wanna call it, so, so good for so many things. If you had, well, I don't know that I could say, if you just had this one oil in your emotional therapy kit, you know, or I can't say that which oil would be my favorite, but it's, lavender is definitely one that I would always want to have in an, emo, in an aromatherapy kit that I was making. Okay, going back to remind you what we're doing today and this week. This week we're diffusing two drops of Siberian fur essential oil, one drop only of cilantro, okay, Siberian fur essential oil, which is the oil of aging and perspective, and one drop of cilantro oil, which is the oil of releasing control. And then two drops or more, two to three, whatever you like, play with this, play with this blend to see what you like best. Just, I would just recommend one drop of cilantro oil because it is so over, it tends to overpower things. And then two to three drops of lavender essential oil, the oil of communication and contemplation. The song that we're diffusing that we are listening to this week is I Hear a Symphony from the Supremes and the affirmation that we are 
focusing on today is I am allowing others to be wrong quietly. And again, if, if they're, I was gonna say, if they're, if something, if they're going down a super destructive path and consequences are, are, are huge and immediate, then it's probably good to sound our warning voice. But a lot of, on a lot of other things, we can just let people live. As a mom, I'm definitely guiding a lot of my children, so I'm not gonna do very much of letting them be wrong quietly. You know, it's you're gonna get to your homework and you're gonna get to your chores, but I, I'm gonna let them be wrong and and learn from some of from their decisions too. It's it's always a balancing act on that when you're a parent. The affirmation for the entire week is I am consciously forgiving myself and others. Given ourselves the gift of forgiveness, giving other people this the gift of forgiveness. Okay, this is Susanna Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, and Living the Wholesome Life, reminding us all that we have this incredible power within us, with God, to make every day a great day. Bye-bye.